Hi and welcome to another episode of I Love Youth Work. Today we have Adam Muirhead who is the Chair of the Institute for Youth Work. Yo and welcome to another episode of I Love Youth Work. Hi, welcome Today, to I Love Youth Work. Welcome to another episode of welcome I Love Youth Work. Welcome to another Youth edition of I Love Youth Work. That's the day we are. Adam, welcome to I Love Youth Work. Hey, good to see you, man. Absolutely, yeah. How's the day been for you so far? <sighs> Day's been good. Day's yeah. been good. The sun even tries to come out. So we're yeah, <laughs> yeah, bringing everyone to Brighton for a national conference came with its logistical troubles, but actually it seems like we've been getting some good work done and people seem happy. Good. There'll be some interesting conversations. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. We're, we're talking about coastal youth work. We just mm. came out of a workshop uh, with the legendary Jane Melvin, uh, talking about coastal youth work. Let, let's start there. Let's just jump straight in there. What's coastal youth work, and is it is it something? Is it something that we should be focusing on? Well, um, part of the conversations we were having around the the theme actually for the for the conference sort of came out of that, and uh, I wanted to go somewhere based on practice, and we started looking at some of these figures of deprivation, figures of higher mental health, um, involvement in criminal organisations, mm. um, the things that were affecting local young people that happened to be specifically to do with coastal issues. Mm. And we started digging deeper and uh, yeah, the distinction between growing up on the coast and growing up in maybe some inner city places was really big. It was an opportunity for us to look at that issue specifically with youth workers go, is this, is this something distinct? Is this something that has required us to in, in, produce a different response? Or is it, I mean, is it just youth work and youth work's youth work? And, but, we, but we kind of want to interrogate that rather than just saying coastal youth work um, and have the discussion and felt that conference was a great place to do that. Because it is a conversation. And it's been refreshing uh, being here today yeah. because it's adding to the conversation. It's not about saying you need to learn this. It's, it's about let's have this conversation together and it's a bit like a fractal of what I Love Youth Work is about. Not telling people what to do but saying, hey, should we be discussing this? What do you think? Let's have a safe environment where we can discuss that. Yeah, absolutely. And um, it's sort of an ambition for the Institute for Youth Work to be that place where we can hold conversations like that. And we want to be a democratically informed organisation that's membership led, independent. And yeah, if something's a bit of a hot topic, let's nail it. And as well as your role with the Institute, you're involved in several other things, I believe. Yeah. It might be interesting for the viewers just to hear a little bit about your, your career in youth work and, and how that happened. Mm -hmm. Sure, yeah, happy to say. We, um, I have been doing youth work for about 16 years now. I started volunteering as a 17-year-old in a, mm -hmm. a, a special, special needs youth club yeah. back in Hampshire. Um, they liked a bit of me, gave me some paid hours in a youth club, some street work, but it was only really sort of a few hours a week. Um, I had the opportunity to go and do a season uh, in Bude in Cornwall as an outdoor activity instructor. I went and worked with young people down there, doing some taster sessions, sort of climbing, surfing, things like that. Suited me at the time as a dreadlocked 19 year old to go and do that. Um, and uh, then moved to Brighton and um, picked up little bits of work that became bigger bits of work. Um, eventually a full-time job, which is where I am now as the Director of Youth Work at um, the Trust for Developing Communities, which yeah. is a local charity, um, but the uh, likely the biggest provider of open access youth work in the city now. So I manage all of our youth work, a team of about 14. We have about turn over about £250,000 a year delivering two young people. And um, long may it continue. And some associate lecturing as well at the University of Brighton. Yeah, that's right. So yeah, in my spare time, I'm lecturing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, on the youth work degree course. Great. And the organisation I work in full time uh, as a really community development ethos. So I lead the community development module, uh, participation module, and then do some reflective practice stuff as well. But um, the team there are fantastic. I grew up uh, and did my professional qualification there, and mm. welcomed back into the bosom, um, and uh, just really happy to be at this nexus between academia, practice and delivery and national strategy now. Nice place to be. Yeah. 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 So, so we, we've got an interesting term about uh, youth work in the UK. How would, you, how would you describe where we are? What kind of season do you think we are? What kind of, if, you, if people are watching this internationally, how would you describe youth work in the UK at the moment? I describe it as challenged, 
Mm. Um, a bit mangled. I think that uh, certainly when the Institute for Youth Work was being formed as a professional association for youth workers, there were a lot of questions about who we are, what our collective identity is. Mm. And, um, and in part, that, that's why the Institute was incepted, uh, to, to sort of help us gather a collective voice and collective identity. And I think some of that work's been happen happening, and I think that when you, when you do ask uh, youth workers who they are and what they do, you get questions about helping young people to, to beat the odds and overcome inequalities and those sorts of things and the barriers they're facing. But it seems like people get really excited about changing the odds and how we can still be these... Uh, is it the, the difference between being uh, an agent of social control or an agent of social change? Mm -hmm. And actually, I think people are starting to actively resist the narratives around, well, knife crime. Youth worker, go solve life crime. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, no, no, this is bigger. This is about, um, it's not about training uh, competencies for young people. It's about an education and it's, um, it's, it's, it's not technology that has a predetermined outcome. It's a phrenesis. It's, a, it's a, a, an ultimate good that we might be doing for young people. So that's where I kind of want to, that's why I personally locate youth work and, um, and uh, I think as people are becoming more empowered to talk about the youth work they want to do and the stuff they see that's transformational mm -hmm. and empowering and emancipatory, let's move youth work back to, back to that place and assert that from a position of strength rather than take the king's shilling and, um, and do whatever, fit ourselves into whatever box. So yeah, that's kind of where I am right now. Nice, and that, that's cropped up throughout the day today. Um, one, one question we always like to ask is, as you look back on the work that you've done up until now, is there a one case or one project or one young person that kind of shines through as a highlight, a golden moment? <sighs> if there's one young person. Um, there are several moments, and I've, for all the other stuff I do, I still deliver. Like I'm there at the moment three nights a week working mm. with some really interesting, lively young Great. people, and, um, and I love that, and I don't ever want to let that go as much as my boss tells me I should. <laughs> the, um, the idea that I could just pick one is really troubling, mm. but there were some moments, I think, some of, the, some of the best youth work I was involved in was when there was a threat from the local authority in Brighton and Hove to um, remove all of the funding for open access youth work. Mm. It was completely um, going to be gone as far as the proposal went. And uh, we had this conversation with young people who obviously stood up in their hundreds, mm -hmm. thousands of responding to consultations, became this Protect Youth Services campaign. Lots of us involved, hugely proud, but all of the young people who came and lobbied, came and stood outside meetings, engaged with the formal processes that are usually so exclusive, but made them their own. It didn't matter that there were stuffy people sat around a table. You had young people, that 15-year-old man from uh, an estate I work in on the outside of town, who wouldn't have thought he'd come to a council meeting. But when he went there, and instead of asking some high-fluted question, went, why do you want to make us sad? Mm. It was the thing that caused the chair of the... Uh, chair of the youth committee in the city to stand down and resign the next day. Wow. You can't answer those questions. So why, yeah, so I get proud when I see young people speaking from the heart mm. and us uh, helping them to change the odds, as I say, for other young people, beat the system rather than have to yeah, collude and fit into it. So we've got youth workers watching this. What kind of message would you have for them about the institute and what kind of support that they can get from the Institute of Youth Work, but also on a more on a general scale of what message would you like to give to youth workers watching? Uh, keep up hope. Mm -hmm. Keep up hope. Uh, I, I I truly believe we're seeing some of the some of the green shoots grow out, and even some of the buds on the on the shoots start to form now. It doesn't make it an easy place to be practicing, but um, there are lots of people, there's a real swell of people trying to um, make the changes we want to see to the youth sector. Mm -hmm. Stay true to your values. It's, um, it's difficult, but it's the thing that makes us unique. So, you know, tell the police commissioner that you're not going to do it like that, you're going to do it like this, and there's a value in that, and assert the reason for that, and just pick those little battles that we can win. And if you ever need the Institute to come and tell that commissioner, yeah, that's how we do it. That's how we do it. And it works. 
then come knock on our door. Sign up as a member, that's something else I'd like to offer to all the viewers mm -hmm. out there. If you're certainly uh, England-based, then you're welcome to come and join us and be part of the conversation and we can capture your voice along all, all our other members and, um, and speak to power and speak the truth to power. And we'll have those details linked below uh, about how they can get in touch with the Institute and you, and you personally and, and about the work that you've done. I suppose what I want to do on behalf of me and Robin is acknowledge your work. Yeah. Um, like we're getting old now, especially in this field. And I suppose whenever we think about your work and when we've met in the past, uh, we've both spoken quite fondly about the inspiration, like you're one of the best in our tribe, and I want to acknowledge that publicly yeah. because it's not only enthusiasm and positivity and optimism, it shows the breadth of our tribe. This is not just about academia, this is also about practice, and it's also about knowing what the potential of what our, our field and our sector is. So, yeah, yeah, you know, I wanted to acknowledge that publicly and be grateful for all the people that you have worked with and, and, and can't say thank you. But I think you're a good example of um, someone who is in our field and, and a young person growing up today could say, yeah, you know, that's someone who I could... Um, it's back to what you said at the beginning of this talk. It's that nexus point, isn't it? Mm. You're able to talk with the academics, but you're also able to go out there and deliver and be you know, practice-based. And it's vital. It's vital. So thank you. Yeah. And thanks, and thanks for spending some time to speak to us today. It's been my pleasure. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Thank you.